Richard! Richard, help! Sean? Yeah, it's me! Why are you in a sewer? Uh, I was looking for the turtles. You were as pathetic as you are sad. Now listen to this, because it's a Pabro's exclusive. I'll go get a ladder. What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're speaking the language, bromance. Sean, are you Sean? Are you having tummy troubles? I am having some tummy trouble. Like I need to go to the bathroom ASAP. Oh, so Richard, so last night we were going to record a show, and I had to cancel on you. Right? I told you we can't do it. Right. And you texted me. You said, "Well, the only reason, the only way we can't do the show is if the lady friend of yours, well, lady friend being my wife, so she's really not lady friend. She's a lady wife. Yeah, specify that because she's gonna <laughs> yeah. be like, who's the lady friend? And then you're like, no, it was you. I, I, I said lady friend. I was trying to be, I was trying to be cool. Richard, and- I need a new place to live <laughs> <laughs> and more money. I'll find that new house." <laughs> No, but you said the only way that you'll allow this to allow us to cancel last night is if me and the wife get you know to get to make it biblical, right? Make it, yeah, you know, you know making that sweet love, knock on the door and deliver that meat. Yeah, deliver that meat for sure. But Richard, unfortunately, there's a stomach bug going around my house. Oh, and that day, or was it that day? No, the day before, I stayed home to help out Tiffany. You know, watch the kid and everything because she stays home. And she probably went to the bathroom more times than she wants me to say on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but yesterday, um, my son caught this bug. And at 3 o'clock in the morning, Tuesday morning, we got the baby monitor rocking and rolling. And I hear a little, wah! And the next right. thing I hear, Yeah. Yeah, he he's, yeah, he's pooping pretty bad. That's great. Yeah. That makes me so happy. I walked out uh, into the living room to help Tiffany out, and it smelled like a sewer. Like, it just burst. Like, you know, I'm getting ready to call a plumber, get somebody in to fix the pipes, and she's like, no. That's amazing. It's just your son. I'm like, oh, well. That makes me feel so good. (laughs) We found something else he takes after you, honey. (laughs) Wait, what do you mean I have to sleep on the couch? Oh, I need a new place to live. (laughs) Um, yeah, I know. I, I've, I've had those moments where like, you just, you pick them up and then you're like, you know, it's just easier to put you in the tub yeah. and hose you off. So that's what you do. You just, you, you just strip them down and you just sit them in the tub and you just <laughs> take the sprayer and you just hose them off. Well, they don't mind. They like the water spray them in the face. So they get mouthy. There is, there is no amount of wipes that's going to do <laughs> Like you can't economically clean up that mess with wipes and justify it to your and justify it to your budget. <laughs> yeah, he's a uh, he's he hasn't been too bad with it. There was a it was the, like the first weekend I was going to be home by myself with him and Tiffany. I remember you put up a picture. Yeah, I posted, posted a, picture a picture about it. Yeah. So yeah. Tiffany leaves and I, I'm like, OK, well, she got me biscuits and gravy. We know I love biscuits and gravy. So he was in the living room playing, you know, taking care of himself. So I'm like, I'm going to eat this real quick, and then we'll go hang out. And I eat it, and I walk in. I'm like, you know, he's not really, like, moving around a whole bunch. Like, he's just kind of sitting there. Kind of floating. I'm like, huh. And I walk over, and I'm like, what's that on your... Oh, God. And he just looks at me like, hey, something bad just happened. <laughs> I need assistance. <laughs> I need an adult. <laughs> I need an adult. But it was literally, like, five minutes after she left, and he's like, all down his leg. That's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. I like the fact that you you act, you stopped to photograph it. Well, if it happened like at like a later point in the night, I wouldn't have thought anything of it. But it was seriously, like a sitcom, like, and it's what's funny is when she picked him up to say bye to him, he let a good one rip. Like she picked him up and he goes, Boop! and she's like, ha, 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 he's about to poop, and then she left. Five minutes later, I walk in the living room after eating a little bit, and it's like, what's all this poo everywhere? Yeah. Wackiness ensues. Oh, who doesn't love a good poo story? Oh, yeah. 
It's 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 a cheap laugh, but it's still a laugh. Oh yeah, I think I've got we we kind of were talking about this before the show, and I've got like a couple poo stories I want to share. Okay, well I have I have I I'm okay. You you want to bring in your stories? I'm going to construct the temple in which you can you can profess your stories. Okay, you're, you're gonna you're gonna set up the John for this story. Yes, <laughs> yes. This is the this is the uh, this is the setup. Okay, so there was a story I found on, is this on Salon? Yes. And don't judge me, sometimes Salon.com has a decent article, okay? So that's where I found this, Salon.com. What's Salon? I've never even heard of it. Is it like literally what I think, like hair stuff? That's what I thought it was, isn't it? I don't I gotta know. Look. Is it a maybe yeah. it's a guy? Maybe it's a guy whose name's Sal, and he thought like, "Hey, it's Sal on. Get it? It's Sal, and I'm online. Sal on bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Sal online. You know that? That's like salon. People are gonna come here thinking they can get hair products. Oh, damn it. Oh, I'm gonna need I a new think house. Ever, I didn't think of this through very much. <laughs> well, I already bought the domain name, so. Okay, Sean, this is a story about about the the great state of Alabama. I actually just drank some whiskey from Alabama before this show. Yeah, it it shows. It it shows. Because I'm not wearing any pants? Yes. Okay. Please don't poo yourself. <laughs> um, John, this is a story about oh, what's the best way? You know what? I'm I'm just just going to do what I always do. Not going to bury the lead. I'm just going to get right into it. In February, Alabama is set to debate Senate Bill 1. Senate Bill number 1, also known as the Alabama Privacy Act. And is right? this, what year is this? Is it February of 17 or February last year? No, this is February of this year. Okay. The article was written... Um, no, the article was written January of this year. Wow, so this is current events, Richard. This is very current. Very current. Okay. The legislation, the legislation, which was uh, pre-filed by State Senator Phil Williams in May. So uh, apparently this, this ball has been rolling since May. This stipulates that restroom attendants must be present to monitor all mixed gender facilities including gender-neutral bathrooms. According to the bill, such staffers would be on hand to ensure the, quote, I'm using, putting this in quotes because the story does, appropriate use of the restroom, as well as to answer any questions or concerns posted by users. <laughs> Sir, I have a question. I have to go poo. Can I use the urinal? No. <laughs> can I use the sink? No. Oh. Can I use the trash can? I don't think you should be using the bathroom at all, sir. <laughs> which one is for number onesies and which one's <laughs> for twosies? What happens if I have to do both at the same time? <laughs> We're out of toilet paper. Do I use my hands? <laughs> no. Well, we've got the bacon thing. Can I hit the bacon thing to dry my butt? <laughs> Um, excuse me, we ran out of toilet paper and I used my shirt. Um, do we provide laundry services <laughs> here at Walmart? No. So I have to buy a new shirt then. I would. What gender neutral places are they talking about? There's not really specific gender neutral places. I would think most places are not gender neutral. No, they have the uh, the family bathrooms. Have you ever seen those? So, okay. So basically those are the ones that will stay unattended. Um, I think those are the ones that will be attended. All mixed gender facilities. Restroom attendants must be present for all mixed gender facilities, including gender neutral bathrooms. Which would be the family bathrooms. Well, that's what I think because like, you know, there's a man in a women's room and those aren't obviously gender neutral. Mm -hmm. Those took a side. They took a side in the gender war. <laughs> and then you have but the family restroom, that's usually for like, like if I'm, if I'm there with, you know, or okay, like, okay. So Tiffany goes to the store with, you know, with, with the two-year-old, let's say he's two now mm -hmm. and he needs to go potty. 
like she uh, she she doesn't want to go into the guy's room and she doesn't want to send him in there by himself. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, every every boy that had to go shopping with their mom had to endure that. Like, oh, well, I can't let you go to the boys' room by yourself, so let's go to the girls' room. It's like, yeah. I want to go to the girls' room. Everyone will be in there seeing that I'm a boy. It's, it's for girls. This is stupid. Be I don't like, want to. And you're like, that's when, And that, and Sean, that is why I didn't know that I could pee standing up until I was <laughs> 14 years old. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so answer any questions or concerns posed by users. I that that's that's where I'm that's where I'm starting to see the breakdown in what I would consider to be the way normal society should function. Well, so I've been to places like the family restrooms are starting to become more and more common. And I was at a conference that was predominantly male. Yeah. So at the conference, like the bathroom was packed. And I had to go number two. And I'm like, I, I don't know about you, but I can't go number two around people very easily. No. I'm very self-conscious about it. Like, have you ever, okay, so how long have you actually, like, wait, like, so you're getting the stall and you're, and you're on, you know? And how, may, how long have you, like, waited? Because you're, like, because you sit there, it's like a, it's like a Chinese stand-up, yeah. right? Like, you're sitting there and you got your hands on the sides <laughs> and you're like, Please leave. Please leave. You're like, and like everything's wanting to leave yeah. because you're in the position and you're all ready to go and you're just sitting there and you know somebody's <laughs> like in the stall next to you or two stalls down or at the urinal. And then you're like a hunter, right? You have this like, you have, you get this like spider sense, this unnatural sense of hearing because you're like, okay, okay, he's washing his hands. Yep. I, I hear I hear the soap dispenser. He's using the soap dispenser. There's the towel thing. All right. Oh, one, oh god. There's the towel, towel thing. <laughs> a little bit seeps. <laughs> kind of like you do that. a little bit. Kind of. <laughs> like oh oh. Like you're sitting like like you start to do, like shuffle your you're shuffling your feet around yeah. on the floor, biting your lip. You're like please don't please don't. There's that there's that time interval from like a person opening the door to leave and you hear, and like you're sitting there and you're waiting for that final like sound of the door hitting the door frame. So that way, you know, the door's shut <laughs> Then release the hounds. Yeah. Release Oof. the Kraken. I feel like there's a little bit of an etiquette though. Cause what I hate the most is like, let's say, let's say you go into a bathroom and somebody's already in there. In, in one of the other stalls. So you go and take your, your position to do your business. And that person will sit there and play poop roulette with you for like 30 minutes. <laughs> and it's like, listen here, mother trucker. I came in after you. You do your dirty business and get the hell out so I can do mine. Yeah. yeah. I kind of I kind of hold that etiquette to myself. Like if I'm in there and somebody walks in after me, it's so like I'm sitting, I'm about ready to do my thing. And then somebody else walks in. I'll plug my ears and let the dirty deed go because I feel it's only fair. No, see, I'm the second person. I'm the person you, you okay. Uh, that I'm that person you don't like. You're that because son I'm like of a no, bitch. no, no, nope. I'll I'll nope. I'll wait. I'll wait. I can hold out longer than you. <laughs> trust me. What pisses me off about that person that never fails? Like, so you you wait twenty minutes. You're playing this poop game. And you're right. like, all right, I got to do it. Like, I, I like, I'm about to pop a filter what, here. What stall? What stall do you usually pick? No, the handicapped one. You know, they actually say that that's the dirtiest one. Well, there's more room. How much room do you need? You're not handicapped. Well, see, I, I poop like a, a little kid. Like, I have to take off my pants. <laughs> have to take <laughs> you off hang my them shirt. on the little hook. <laughs> <laughs> then you walk around for a bit. <laughs> do, 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 do. Like, oh, I gotta work. You know, work it out a little. <laughs> I have to bring my little toys and play with them for a bit. I'm like, oh, okay, now I feel like I have to poop. It's really weird when people <laughs> walk in. You're on the floor. You're like, oh, this is cold. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. Usually I'll sit like in the middle of the bathroom when nobody's in there and somebody walks in. I'm butt naked playing with cars. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> <laughs> bathroom etiquette. <laughs> no, I always, honestly, I always, I pick the one closest to the door. Because from what I've read, it's actually the 
it's the less frequently you it's the less used so therefore it's the cleanest yeah i i don't really know if i'm in a more public place i will if it's all completely open i think i usually try like the middle one because i've heard similar stories about the middle stall because usually somebody will go to a far corner or far away so that they're not like right in the middle right because they're like no this is shameful yeah but if I find a toilet and it looks like remotely disgusting, I'll go to the next one. Like I want to make sure I feel comfortable. Oh yeah, hands down. Yeah, you, know, you think about that, Rich. Like how many public toilets have you sat on unwilling? Like you had to. Like there's no no if ands or buts about it. Like oh, you I think were so proud of yourself <laughs> right now. <laughs> like think of how many other you know males have shared that same toilet seat with you. They're bare ass. Sean, we've stayed in a hotel room. We've we've shared a toilet. We have multiple times, actually. Yeah, I just realized that in my head. I was like, "Oh God, it's like our asses have touched." Yeah, that's why I always let you go first, so you could warm the toilet up for me. The toilet seat. Because if you ever see it on a cold toilet seat, it's like, Brr. oh God, yeah. That's why you put socks on it. Ah, uh, why are you shitting on socks? Well, you don't if you have them on the seat. Exactly. <laughs> Anyway, we're only one paragraph into the Boy, story. So back to the etiquette. So what happened? You're the kind of person, though, so you play that 30-minute roulette game, and finally uh-huh. the other person's like, I got to do this. And they let it go, and you kind of have a, oh, I, it'd be like whenever somebody else yawns. <laughs> <laughs> so you <laughs> like, cough. <laughs> 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 but yeah, but so you hear that person letting loose, you're like, oh, finally. they're gonna, Okay, I can't wait anymore either. And they usually end up oh, pooping right next to I, you. You know what? I, I've done that, and I wait for flushes. Your flushes are good. The air, the hand dryer. Like you sit there, and you're like, you're like, you're like, like you hear, like especially like if somebody's in the urinal. See, again, you have that super hearing, that spider sense hearing, and you're sitting there, and you're like, okay, they're peeing, they're peeing. Oh, dribble, <laughs> dribble, and shake, flush, shake, <laughs> and flush. <laughs> 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 which, <laughs> which doesn't help anything. Totally because, nailed it. <laughs> because it's like, okay, I still heard you poop over that. <laughs> it's like people who have potpourri in their bathroom. It's like, okay, now it smells like a shit forest. Thanks. <laughs> now I'm standing in a beautiful garden and somebody pooped in it. <laughs> there, uh, there was this time I was using the bathroom and, uh, Oh, what was happening? Oh, I was trying to hold it, but it was finally like, I got to do this. And uh, no, it was the person next to me ended up pooping, like, as I was. Like, it was basically that, like, back and forth. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so I couldn't hold it in. I started giggling. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like, I'm like, burp, burp. and the next thing I hear, burp, burp. I'm like, <laughs> and I tried to cover it up. So I go, <laughs> 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 Oh, good times. Yeah, I love the fact I love the fact that we're reduced to twelve year olds. Oh yeah. As soon as this comes up. College was the worst because uh the college I lived in basically had like a like, there's two bathrooms. And there's a bathroom downstairs too that was a single person bathroom. But it was like okay. you know, it was like stair like two sets of stairs down, like not far. But like what I would do is I would go to the I would go to the one on my side of the hall, and if there was somebody in there pooping I'd go to the other side. If somebody was pooping there, I'd go downstairs Uh and poop in the single bathroom. Okay. That's just another example of me running away to poop by myself. (laughs) I'm ashamed (laughs) of my poops. I had a friend. There was a friend that I worked with, and he would actually time. He would schedule his poos uh, so that way he had enough time because we worked in this hospital, and... He actually spent a day, he actually spent a morning or or a few mornings, like, scouring the entire hospital for, like, the best bathroom. <laughs> and so then he would time himself so that way he had enough time to go all the way to this bathroom and back. Like, for breaks or lunch or whatever? Yeah. So, like, he would always take a set break, and that would be his, I'm gonna go over here and poo brain. <laughs> uh, I mean, everybody poops, Richard. I don't know why we're so embarrassed about it. I think that's amazing control that you're able to do it at the same time every day, that you're able to regulate yourself that good. I'm not that good, unfortunately. That well. Anyway, so uh, SB1 is 
yet another one of numerous bathroom bills targeting the transgender community. Targeting the transgender community that have been pushed by Republican legislatures over the past year, most of which have failed. The Human Rights Campaign reported that more than 200 pieces of legislation were debated at the state and local levels in 2016. But in many ways, this bill goes further than previous efforts. House Bill 2, an extremely unpopular legislation forced through North Carolina's General Assembly Assembly in April, lacks any kind of enforcement provision. Although the legislation bars trans people from using public facilities that correspond with their gender identity. Basically, say, so so that's so it's saying that, you know, the whole gender identity thing is a relevant. I don't know if they're saying it's irrelevant or they're saying you go with what you have. I'm not, I'm not sure. There was a push. The bill believed that a violation of the statute would result in a criminal penalty for trespassing, while others have claimed that it wouldn't be enforced at all. Williams claimed in a statement that SB1 is designed as a response to Target, which announced last year that it would allow trans people to use bathrooms that match their gender identity in its stores. Um, Target announced it would roll out gender-neutral facilities in all of its 1,800 locations. So they're talking about putting bathroom attendants in these places. So... We're we're getting we're getting you know what we're getting, Sean? You know what they're called? Poo police. Poo police. You know, the only place I've ever seen bathroom attendants is like really, really fancy places and strip right? clubs. Yeah, why the strip clubs? I don't know. And they always is expect that, like, a tip to stop too. people from like jerking the gherkin? Uh, maybe. <laughs> because like, hey, you keep you keep that boner. We need you to spend more money. Yeah, right? You get that you get out of here with that nonsense. You finish, you're like, oh, well, I guess I can just go home now. <laughs> Job's done. <laughs> I still feel sad and dirty, but <laughs> uh, at least I hate myself now instead of in the morning. Okay, Sean. So, so here's so here's here's the pitch. I'm a guy, and my job is bathroom attendant. <laughs> apparently, I'm supposed to check who has boy parts and who has girl parts. It's well, like, I guess if I'm in, if I'm in the if I'm in the guy's bathroom, I'm supposed to make sure everybody has boy parts. So here's my question: What is what sounds more illegal to you? Is it somebody walk that you know that identifies as a guy and they go into the guy's bathroom, they go into a stall and do their business and leave, or and they shouldn't be, and they shouldn't be according to this law, they shouldn't be, and that's a violation of the law. But doesn't it sound more legal? To be to have me standing in there with a taser and like say somebody's suspicious. <laughs> your hair's a little long, hippie. Show me your dick. Show me your dick. You can't handle the dick. <laughs> Honestly, I would love to have that job. Well, I'm kind of thinking of like the dude that's coming out of like the police academy. You know, he's been wanting to be a police officer his whole life. He, he shows didn't up. do that well in police academy. Yeah, well, like his like his dad was a detective. His grandpa's a detective, and he's like, you know, you know, maybe, maybe he's not as smart as his dad and his grandpa, so he's got a chip on his I'm shoulder. I'm going to make detective one day, just like my old <laughs> papa. Just like Pop Pops and Papa. <laughs> and he gets out, and they're like, all right, all right, uh, what do they call, like, fresh out of the academy people? Cadet? Maybe we'll call him Cadet Steve. Yeah, yeah. It's like, all right, Cadet Steve, it's like, we got your first assignment. He's like, I want to be in my own patrol car, right? I want to I have a buddy who I'm going to, you know, it'll be like those sitcoms. Like, no, you're not going to be a patrol car. Uh, we got you on poo police duty. Poo police? Yeah, it's, so you're, you're going to hang out in front of the bathroom and make sure that all the people going in and out are, are supposed to use the correct bathroom. So you're going to make sure That's the boys job? use the boys. We'll have Samantha over here. She'll check to make sure the girls are using the girls. Ooh, can I... Can I can I make sure that the can I make can uh, can I pick the ladies' room? No, no, you can't, oh. Steve. Oh, I get a taser though, right? Sure, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was the uh, the first generation of uh, the stripper attendants. Is like, well, you can't have a taser, but you can have some cologne. Yeah, so that way, if somebody gets too unruly, you spray them in the eyes. That's your defense. It's like pepper spray. Well, maybe that's how they test them. 
So they come up. It's like, all right, well, do you want this Calvin Klein or do you want this Victoria's Secret? Yeah. I'll take the Victoria's Secret, please. Ha <laughs> ha! Gotcha. Yeah, busted. Get out of here. No, I just I like the smell. It reminds me of my grandma. She used to wear Victoria's Secret all the time. <laughs> she was from the '60s. Don't judge. I'm so sad. Is she still with us? No, she died. How do you feel? Terrible. You, you, can, use, you can use whatever bathroom you want. Uh, it's fine. I'll write you. It'll just be a verbal warning this time. <laughs> so there you go. So that's what happens. Is somebody walks in that's suspicious, and he's and he's standing there, and all of a sudden he's like, oh, it's go time, and he puts a little siren on his head. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh, license and registration, please. <laughs> you have a permit for that? <laughs> That's an assault style when it's over eight inches. <laughs> <laughs> it's big and scary. I don't want it in my bathroom. You're frightening the children. <laughs> I was the one that closed the door. You're the one that busted it open. I've been waiting here 30 minutes to take a shit because I can't, <laughs> can't poop in front of people. <laughs> Yes. Okay. See now this now here. That's a thing because, okay. We were just talking about like, Oh, I I'm a nervous poor can't do it when, you know, other people in the room. Now there's somebody in the room all the time. There's an attendant. Are they inside the room? Oh man. That's gotta be a shitty job. Pardon the pun. Oh, look at you. Well, I mean, I would almost think you'd rather just stay on the outside because you can see who's coming in. But if you have to sit in there and you see, you know, old Greg who went to the the food court and had the chili dog from the food court and it didn't it didn't settle on his tum tum very well. No, you see him rushing like, hey, I need to see your burp. Oh God, you ate the chili dog, didn't you? Please be a man. Please be a man. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Dodge that bullet. <laughs> Which which guy said that? Is it the guy in the stall? <laughs> Probably <or> the guy? <laughs> both. <laughs> He's like, well, I am at Target, so at worst I can just go buy new underwear for a dollar. Well, it's Target, so it's like six dollars. Love Target. Don't you don't you disparage Target? No, I like Target. Target's a good store. Um. Okay, so yeah, I think if it was me, if it, I mean just me personally, if okay, Sean, let's say I you know apply at Target, okay. And and they're like, OK, well, we have this law we have to comply with. So we're looking for a bathroom attendant. So then I'm like, OK, well, what is like, what does that entail? Well, what you're supposed to do is um, you stand in the bathroom and if somebody has a question, then you answer it. And otherwise, you're just making sure that um, men go in the men's room and women go in the women's room and there isn't a. You know, people that identify, you know, people that identify as a man doesn't don't necessarily go into the men's room. So I'd be like, okay, so I get I guess, you know, I need a job. You know, let's say it pays minimum wage. All right. I, you know, I need a job. It'll pay the bills. It's 40 hours a week. I guess that's what I'll do. Get to listen to your podcast and just kind of hang out. Right. Because I'm just sitting. So if it was me, I'm just sitting in the bathroom because I'm not going to check. Like, I'm not going to be the guy that's going to be like, oh, please, I need uh, sure, sir, could you please drop your pants? I need to make sure <laughs> <You're> gonna... <laughs> you are who the who the completely stick man sign says you should be. Well, it's going to happen. Let's say let's say you're the reverse. That. So that's that's what you I'd probably do the same thing. I'm like, I don't want to bother people like as long as they're not bothered. Like my my goal in that position would be like, make sure that nobody in the bathroom is bothering anybody in the bathroom. Right. That's like my goal in that job. But let's say you're like the serious dude, like the dude that takes this job way too serious. You're wearing like aviator shades <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and bike shorts. I want to need a little proof of gender, please. And what's going to happen is people are going to leave the bathroom, contact the manager, and they're like, hey, Greg, hey, Rich, can you go back in? You've been doing a great job. Keep doing your thing. We got to talk to Greg. You keep this up. We're going to promote you to the women's bathroom. (laughs) Greg, we got a lot of sexual harassment charges coming against (laughs) you right now. It's like, what are you doing in there? I'm just asking to see everybody's dick. I don't see what the big deal is. Due diligence. That's what the name of this game is. 
due diligence. <laughs> you let those women poop on your toilets. What's next? First, they take our toilets. Then you know what's next? Then they'll start looking for jobs. <laughs> whoa, whoa, Greg. Oh, I, I, I just thought we were having a <laughs> having a moment, a man I, moment, right? It's like I, I'm a I'm a woman, Greg. My name's oh. Samantha. I'm getting fired, aren't I? <laughs> but yeah, that'd be my thing. It's like it's not really so much even that. Like I'm not gonna check. I'm not gonna be like, oh, you know, prove to me your <laughs> prove to me your manliness. Well, even if a dude comes in in a dress, you're still gonna be like, well, that's okay. Looks comfortable. I get. Well, it doesn't look comfortable. It's a little tight, but I can see the outline, so he belongs in here, right? And I'm like, I, like. Okay, so me, I just let everything go because, like, worst case scenario, let's say worst case scenario happens, okay? Let's say somebody that is apparently a woman or, you know, whatever. Let's say they go into your men's room and then, you know, soccer mom, you know, Flora walks in with her little boy or sends in her little boy and then she, something happens and then... Soccer mom comes at you freaking out. <laughs> Mom's little kid's like, Mom, come wipe my butt, please. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Florence, get in here and wipe your kid's ass. <laughs> I don't get paid enough for this. Okay, see, and there, there again. So let's say, you know, mom comes in and she, you know, sees something that apparently shouldn't be going on according to this law. And then she freaks out on you. You're the bathroom attendant. You're like, well, you're in here. You shouldn't be in here. <laughs> Victoria's Secret or Calvin Klein? The choice <laughs> is yours. Right in the eyes. Uh, it's only got like a two and a half inch spray. She's like, like your dick. Hey, get back here. Hey. That was rude. Thunk. <laughs> you just hit him with the bottle <laughs> in the head. Knock him out. Bitch that has small dick. <laughs> I mean, it's factual statement, but still, it burns. It hurts. It hurts me inside. Inside, it hurts. I can't help it. It's genetics. It's just it's what happens. I come from a long line of small dicked men. But, but we I'm saying, survived. like worst case scenario <laughs> happens. Worst case scenario happens. I get fired. Like, and they're like, okay, so I don't have that job. <laughs> so you do your next job. Like, well, why'd you get fired? It's like, well, I can't really tell men and women apart very well. <laughs> And that's why I think I would be a great lawyer. Cashier <laughs> lawyer. <laughs> uh, your honorable judge Judy. My name's Joe. Damn it. Comes back to caught me every time. <laughs> Williams added that businesses that persist in offering gender neutral facilities will quote, provide attendance at their own expense. In short, if you're going to play that game, you need to ante up and face the issue. Um, Chase Strangio, or Strangio, the state, the staff attorney for the LGBT and HIV project at the American Civil Liberties Union, isn't so sure. This Alabama bill is incredibly odd because it could never be enforced in any way. That's what I'm saying. How do you enforce that? How do you make sure that the bathroom attendants are doing the job? Do you set up stings? What would that be like? <laughs> Like you set up like a bathroom sting to ke- to make sure that the bathroom attendant is doing his job. It's basically so if it's the the like the guy going the women's guy going. He's sitting on the stall. I'm going pee pee in the girls' bathroom. <laughs> I'm making girl poops. I farted like a lady, but I'm a man. <laughs> so yeah so like you're the bathroom attendant and all of a sudden like one of the door stalls like flies open and then there's some like there's some person standing there in, like jeans and a flannel shirt and he's like ha ha gotcha and they rip a mustache off and drop their pants <laughs> busted it's like you guys went through a lot of effort to get me fired i mean you could have just fired me this is yeah this is like this is a bit much I've actually been pooping in here like I, I sit on the toilet. That's all I do all day. Bathroom stings. <laughs> new, new real live series on TLC. 
Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they poo on you? <laughs> so you have so so they will create a government agency to oversee the bathroom attendant situation to make sure that all laws are being enforced. I guess I don't know. Is it? I, I've never under. I always thought those were just suggestions. Like I didn't ever really think that that was like actual law that you had to have men's and women's bathrooms. Well, I think that's yeah. I think that's is a that a thing. law? You have to have a if like you if you service so many people. Well, no, because I think well some of them they it, like like some places that like you know, take like you take like a small business or something where like they only have one restroom, and so it'll say like restroom or something on it. But I guess if you service like so many like targets are huge. So they're servicing like what ten thousand people a day. Let's say that's I don't even know if that's close, but. Yeah, who knows? They're at that threshold. So it's like, oh, well, if you're at this amount, you need two restrooms. Which, do they even have to have restrooms? I think, um... Could talk- well, I, if you, I know that, like, if you, if you're, if you have a place that serves food, then you, then you have to have a restroom. Okay. I was just saying Target's like, well, fuck this, then nobody can still use the bathroom. You all <laughs> poop outside like the animals you are. Everybody's, everybody's just... <laughs> Then the the turnaround time in stores is super fast. It's like, oh, sh- I got to poo. I guess that's why. I can't use the bathroom here. <laughs> hurry, hurry and shop. I guess that's probably why they do have the bathrooms, because then people have to stay there longer. And it's like, oh, I'll go poo. It takes me 30 minutes. Now I'm hungry. So I'm going to go get a Kit Kat bar. Uh, the idea of staffing an attendant who literally polices people's gender at the door of every bathroom uh, is the privacy and big government nightmare I would expect people to be concerned about. It's hard to imagine how something like this would be enforced without violating almost every single constitutional right that people have. <clears throat> yeah, the only thing and I, I could... Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the only thing I could think of is you'd have somebody in there watching in case something happens. But even then, like, would you really trust... Like, I wouldn't trust anybody to be in but there. Wouldn't, yeah, but I, uh, that's what... That's that's what those stores have like security for, right? Like if there's some sort of incident going on anywhere in the store. Well, I mean, some of those bathrooms are kind of far off in the corner, so they're kind of out of the way. So if something's happening in there, you may not know. But oh, okay. Even then, like I I don't know who Greg is, who's monitoring the bathroom. Like I'm not gonna trust him in there more than the, yeah. the person who's trying to hold his poo for thirty minutes. And also, like, what if you're doing your job way too well? I would think that you would be just as just as up for punishment as you would if you weren't doing your job at all. Yeah, You're like, uh, Greg, um, I, I understand that you, we hired you to be the bathroom attendant, but it's not required that you make everyone show you <laughs> their dick before they use the, they use the facilities. So he's just standing there and like somebody goes in and like, and they open the door and then bump right into his chest. Be like, oh, I'm sorry. He says, show me your dick. <laughs> what? Excuse me? <laughs> show me your dick. You want to use this bathroom? You whip it out right here in front of me and show me what you got in those pants. Yeah. And also, like, what if you? What if that happens? And you're like, oh, oh, okay. And so you drop trout and he's like, nice. <laughs> Well, I'm thinking, like, what happens when Flo, the soccer mom, accidentally walks in the wrong bathroom? Because, you know, she's flushed. You know, she has, this is her first day away from the kids in a bit, and she's got to do all these errands. And she takes a left instead of a right and walks into the the men's bathroom. And Greg, Super Greg, is like, sees her. Like, he, wa- he walks past, she walks past, he's, he's not like, seen him. Showtime. Puts yeah. on the aviator shades. <laughs> Tackles her. <laughs> takes her out <laughs> screaming. Oh, I got another one, Sarge. I'm not. I'm. I'm your manager. I'm not Sarge. Oh, I'm gonna get fired again. <laughs> Here's my second write-up. <laughs> uh, according or adding to the confusion is the fact that SB one doesn't define gender in its text. Unlike HB two, the North Carolina law defines biological sex as the physical condition of being male or female, which is stated on a person's birth certificate. And I don't know about you, but I carry that thing around all the time. That's what I was just going to say. Be like, like in my wallet, I have my folded birth certificate as we speak. Is that, but I guess you have to use your birth certificate to get your license. So maybe that's, maybe your license would 
So, <laughs> so now there's an underground <laughs> fake license so you can use the other bathroom. <laughs> no, my license clearly says I'm a female, but you have a beard. Nope, female condition. I want to poop female. in here. It's cleaner. So yeah, so you get fake IDs that just like it's exactly like your regular ID. It just has a different gender on it. <laughs> Instead of an M, it has an F. <laughs> so okay, so now somebody's in their stall, and he has like Greg has suspicions. So he puts the siren on his head. Woo, 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 kicks open the door. Uh, license, license, and penis, please. <laughs> Oh, uh, sorry. Okay. I must have left my penis at home. Uh, <laughs> these are the wrong pants. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just do, can I produce my penis at a, at a court date? <laughs> uh, do, do, do. The lack of specificity could be extremely harmful for people in Alabama because it could allow attendants to determine what constitutes gender. Oh, so Sean walks in and he's like, look, and he's like, nope, doesn't count. <laughs> what? I've had this forever. Doesn't count. Go to the girl's room. That doesn't Aww. look like a penis to me. Aww. The third time today. <laughs> Just like high school getting thrown into the girl's bathroom and the girls laugh. <laughs> Go, hee hee, that's not a penis. <laughs> <laughs> it's all I got. <laughs> Bear what you have. Laura, he got thrown in the girl's bathroom again, and he's crying about it. It makes it smaller, Laura. <laughs> he keeps saying he comes from a long line of small penis families. That's not true. I'm packing, Laura. He's I'm disparaging packing. my good name, Laura. <laughs> you know, you know. Come uh, here. I know, John. I know. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> You know how I know my parents don't listen to this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> because they still call. <laughs> uh, uh, while research, what while research from UCLA's William Institute has shown that seventy percent of trans people surveyed said they had been verbally or physically abused in a public bathroom, reports from many states have indicated that. Uh, the transgender or size gender women have been kicked out of restrooms for looking quote too masculine. I think that's just people being dicks. After 22 year old Amy Toms donated her hair to cancer, she was harassed in a public facility in Connecticut by a stranger who shouted, "You don't belong here." <clears throat> <laughs> But it was actually the person next to her was like, man, I really got to poop. You don't belong here. I was here first. <laughs> don't you remember etiquette? <laughs> first come, first poo. <laughs> uh. Okay, I'm kind of sk- I'm kind of like skimming and skipping around through the story. Uh, the ambiguity around gender makes it difficult to understand what this proposed bill is even trying to do said the legal director for the ACLU in Alabama. While the bill was introduced in response to Target's trans-inclusive policy, he added that anyone could be, quote, subject to harassment under this bill because of someone's ill-informed perception. So, yeah, that's the other thing. Like, let's say, okay, so, Sean, you go into the bathroom, and he's like, hang on a second, sir. Um, Could I see your license? And um, I'm going to need you to produce that penis. And then you're like, so then, like, even if it's, like, for some completely other reason, then you're thinking in your head, like, oh, my God, do do I look too girly? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Am I too feminine? Am I too feminine looking? I've been working. I've been working out recently. You know what that is? That's gender. That's profiling. Yeah. And profiling's wrong. (laughs) Sometimes I like bows in my hair. I don't think that I don't think that means anything. That does not define me as a man. You hear my <laughs> voice? It's getting deep right now. Do you hear my voice? It's getting deep right now. <laughs> well, I wonder, you said like there's not going to be any poo police in front of like the uh, non-gender specific bathrooms. Is there just going to start being a line for that? You know, if you got to go in and show your wee-wee to Officer Greg, Officer Poo Greg, it's like, well, I'm just going to go to the bathroom that doesn't have to. And I can poo, poo in privacy. Yeah. I don't have to deal with I don't have to deal with the attendant. I've actually had to do that before. What? 
poo in the the family restroom by myself. Oh yeah, me too. Like it, like you open the door and you see that like two at like say there's four stalls in a bathroom and like two or three of them are full and then you see that the family bathroom's completely empty. You're like, oh, this is mine. Shut the door and lock it. And do you feel bad about that though when you do it? Not at all. I feel like I'm breaking a rule. Well, you know what? If Greg was there, you probably you yeah. might you might be. You'd have to go and like get a doll or something and take it with you. Like, no, this is my kid. Oh, okay. So that's that's my that's one of my other questions. If it's a gender neutral bathroom, then why why does there need to be an attendant? So is that the only one they're watching or are they watching the actual gender specific ones? I thought I maybe they're watching the, the gender specific ones, but the way I read it in the beginning, I think it was the gender neutral ones. But how does that work? Because it's gender neutral. Yeah. Then you're just being a real jerk. <laughs> Show me your dick. It's like, it doesn't matter. Anybody can use this bathroom. You're like, nope, doesn't count. <laughs> I got a checklist. I got We got a quota of, of how many male and females can use this bathroom in a day. So you know what that is? That's, that's, how, that's how you get your own private bathroom at work. Mm, yeah. <laughs> like, nope. Sorry, this is for men only, and then men come up. You're like, nope, women only. <laughs> Your All breasts right. aren't big enough. That doesn't count. It's my break. It is 1030 poo time. Nobody's used this bathroom all day. It's clean. It's going to be empty. <laughs> um, But in addition to essentially tapping hall monitors to regulate how trans people do their business, SB1 has another alarming aspect. If businesses don't follow the regulation by monitoring mixed gender facilities, yeah, see, mixed gender facilities. So that's where they'd have the monitor. Individuals who are forced to share a restroom with a transgender person could sue them for $2,000 in civil penalties, uh, $3,500 for repeat offenses, the provision is similar to a bill introduced last year in Kansas that would have effectively placed a bounty on the heads of the state's trans population for every transgender student that transgender people encounter in the restroom. They would be awarded twenty five hundred damage. <laughs> so it's like Pokemon Go, but with transgender people. <laughs> I caught one. Well, I'm just I thinking caught like one. You- I caught one. That's ten grand. Woohoo! You just start like, you know, say you have say you have a friend of yours that's transgender. You could totally just like rack up dollars. Yeah. What's the I guess it depends on what the penalty is for the transgender. You person. just crack down, crack down on the sleeping bathroom attendants where like, you know, like the transgender person goes in and they go into the stall and they sit down and then that's your setup. And then you walk in into the bathroom you're like hey how's it going and and then you you go to, you push open the door and then you're like oh my god i'm so offended <laughs> triggered triggered i'm so triggered right now i'm pretty sure that person doesn't have a penis twenty five hundred dollars i will take it in ones please <laughs> or a gift card whatever you prefer <laughs> gift card <laughs> Uh, Stranger argued the pr- the provision sends a particularly harmful message, blah blah blah, to the community. Um, the fate the fate of North Carolina may serve as a warning to Alabama that it should pursue this dangerous discriminatory law. The Tar Heel State is that what they call North Carolina? The Tar Heel State? Yeah, that's what they call the uh, university. Is the North Carolina Tar Heels? I totally didn't know that. I think it's supposed to be like a. Uh... Like a goat type thing or something. I don't know. Uh, the Tar Heel State has lost an estimated five billion dollars per year in annual revenue as a result of HB two. Over two hundred companies called for a boycott of North Carolina following the passage of its anti LGBT law. Um, while businesses like PayPal and Deutsche Bank canceled plans ex- planned expansions to the state. Blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. So, I think, I, f- from what I'm seeing here, I'm seeing two things. Number one, bathroom police sounds like a pretty pretty cake cakewalk of a job. I think you could do that job either really, really well by doing nothing or really, really badly by doing everything. Yeah. And 
um i need i need more transgender friends because we could go to alabama and make a mint well i think it was kansas wasn't it kansas where you can make a mint well no they had they had this twenty five hundred dollar provision in uh uh where do they have it they had the two thousand dollar provision in no the two thousand dollars in alabama and then they said um the twenty five hundred dollars was kansas oh okay so So you can uh, just hit both states so i i was gonna share a story where i think having a a bathroom monitor would have been a great thing so back in the day richard i worked at a grocery store and our bathrooms were kind of like in the back up some steps like down like a, a hallway so like way way out of the way Okay. We had, we had guys and girls bathroom. The I think the girls had like just one toilet and the the guys had a toilet and a urinal. Okay. And I'm sitting up there cashing cuz we're special. Yeah. <laughs> cuz cuz guys can't pee sitting down or pee standing up in front of a toilet. No. That's the other test that they're going to implement. Wait, <laughs> is that guy peeing sitting down? I don't down? hear any sp- I don't hear a splooshing. <laughs> I hear a sing. So I'm sitting up there ringing this guy up and, and like we never cleaned the bathrooms or, or at least like as a cashier, I wasn't responsible to clean the bathroom because they're kind of they were kind of private. But we if people asked, we would let them use it. And a guy stopped by as I'm ringing up. He's like, listen, I don't really complain much, but if I had the number for the health department, I would call them and just because of how disgusting your bathroom is. And I kind of giggle like, ha ha ha. Yeah, you know, it's it's just, you know, it's not it's just a bathroom like we you know it's just a bathroom. And, like, it, I just triggered something, so I called my buddy, who was the manager. I'm like, hey, like, somebody said the bathroom's, like, really bad. Can you go take a look at that? Not even more than, like, two minutes later, Richard, I get a phone call. It's like, you got to come see this. And so I walk up the steps, open the door, and this bathroom is covered in poo. Somebody had pooed in the urinal and wiped poo all over the place, which is bad enough, right? Right. And it, in, their, in their poo rage, and it smelled like I almost threw up. But in their poo rage, they ripped the mirror off and threw it down the ground and broke it. Wow. Yeah. Bad enough, right, Richard? So you're looking That's around. Hardcore. And so this person is so upset with themselves, they broke the mirror, wiped poo all over <laughs> the place. So to make sure, Richard. So they that, walk in and they're like. Uh, and then they take a shit. And then they look at behind them and they're like, oh, this is the urinal. This isn't the <laughs> toy. I hate myself. I hate myself. <laughs> Right oh. the walls. I hate myself. And finally, like, like just runs along the walls until it gets to the mirror. It's like I hate my No, you're ugly, Rip. <laughs> oh, not again. <laughs> but just to make sure whoever had to come in after the fact, Richard, and clean up, he wanted to make sure he or she, I guess, because we didn't have a bathroom attendant. We don't know for sure if it was male or female. <laughs> but just to make sure that you understood what had happened with poo, Richard. On the uh, door of the the stall, with their poo, they wrote poop. <laughs> so, so my buddy. So my first, honest, I swear to God, my first response would be, you know, I wasn't sure what this was, but that <laughs> that sign right there, case that- solved. <laughs> thump thump. I thought it was mud. <laughs> but but my buddy he's like listen like can you help me clean this up i'm like no oh god no <laughs> you can fire me right now i cannot clean this up all we need is I'm like like at that point you're just like where where do i start i would have burned the place would down ho- it's like you're it's like your son's ass it's like would a hose reach but at least that's your kid like this i have no no clues. i agree but that's what i'm saying like you're just looking at it and you're like uh, you yeah, just want to yeah. like i could just how, can I just hose? Just take a hose to the whole damn room. <laughs> it starts leaking down into the meat department. You're like, oh, I didn't think this one through. Oh. 50% off meat a... sale. Woohoo! Bad choice. Bad choice. I think your meat's spoiled. It tastes oh. a little shitty. Oh. Try the hot dogs. <laughs> All right, Richard. Well, as we're coming to a close on this bathroom awesome episode, do you have any Richard's closing thoughts? Um. Toilet humor is always funny. Unfortunately, yes. Maybe not unfortunately. No, not unfortunately. There is nothing wrong with toilet humor. I I don't think. I think that this is America, and in America, 
we're free to laugh at whatever we choose. America. Poop, yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, so what? It's, yeah, it's a little, you know, it's toilet humor. So what? But I don't think that makes it less sophisticated. I think that putting an attendant in the bathroom isn't very sophisticated. <laughs> and also, I guess if I'm ever, you know, looking for an easy job, I could always go to Alabama and be a bathroom attendant at Target. And that, and if there's one thing that I love this country for, it's the ability to create unnecessary jobs. <laughs> All right. Well, let me clean up this bathroom a little bit with a little bit of our housekeeping. Visit our website. We're at languageofbros.com. Follow us on Twitter. We're at languageofbro. Email us at eatthebeaver at languageofbros.com. Check out the LLB Army Intelligence Reports. We got the Richards Rants, Thoughts from a 12th Level Intellect, and Ian Wells Presents. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe and leave a review on Google Play Music, iTunes, and Stitcher. And don't forget to check us out on the Pod Bros Network. The podcast site the it's the best podcast site on the network to listen to while you're waiting for that person next to you to finish up their deuce yeah or waiting for them to start at least <laughs> and if you want to give us a little money for our tip jar so we can afford some toilet paper go to our patreon account www.patreon.com slash language of bromance oh you know what this this episode might seem a bit childish but i think i think that we brought some f- sophistication to the bathroom. Yeah. I, I I believe this was a great time, Richard. We shared some stories. Years from now, my son will listen to this and be like, I can't believe you told people about me pooping on my leg. <laughs> uh. <sighs> All right, Richard, was there anything else before I close her out? No, no. Let's end, let's end that here. Let, let's wipe up this episode right now. Oh, <laughs> I see what you did. Like an anus. <laughs> That's all the bromance we have for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And I was saying, oh, man, my tummy. Eat. Oh, God. Oh, oh, please, can I use the bathroom? Eat the beaver. Don't don't take the camera with you this time. I put my pants. 